cloud. Today's topic is going to be titled, go ahead and write this down, pushing through the seasons. It is the summertime. And sometimes in the summertime, people are like this. They're chilling. And they say that they're grinding, but we know that a lot of people are chilling. And, and let me give you some proof of that. I had a guy tell me yesterday, he goes, Brandon, he goes, I'm, I'm, I'm just so busy right now. I just, I just got so much going on. The reality is for so many people say that they're busy, they're watching the Olympics. Now think about that for a second. They're watching other people achieve their dreams. They're getting a gold medal, a silver, a bronze. And let me tell you something. This is what I said to the guy yesterday. Who freaking cares who got the gold medal? You won't remember them five years from today. When are you going to start caring about getting a gold medal for your life? We're spending hours of time watching the Olympics, which by the way, I'm not saying don't watch the Olympics, but for people that really want to go chairman, for people that really want to have a six, seven, eight figure trading account, when are you going to start caring about the gold medals of your own life? We are watching other people achieve their dreams. We are spectators, not participants. You want to be a participant. You want to get the gold medal. You've got to start caring as much about getting the gold medal of your own life as much as you do these people on TV. They don't know who you are. You've got to leave your mark and you can do it inside of this company, right? Start caring about the Olympics of your own life. So today's topic is pushing through the seasons, all right? Pushing through the seasons. So we got the summer. This is what's called the great separator. You have people who are chilling during the summer. And you got people who are grinding. Do you realize that six months from today, you'll be rewarded for what you did today, the next several weeks? Where are you going to be six months from today? Right? It is dependent on what you do today. You are creating the volume today that you will be rewarded for in the fourth quarter of 2021. All right? Okay, so here's what I'm going to do to talk about pushing through the seasons and how to basically create that bridge for how you push what exactly what you need to do during the summertime to set up a great fall, winter time, fourth quarter of 2021. Because you want to make sure that you enjoy the fourth quarter because of all the seed planting that you did right now. It is the great separator. And so that fourth quarter becomes the harvest. And with that, Guys, I am super grateful to bring on Chairman 750, Matt Rose. So this is somebody who's become a great friend of mine over a number of years. I actually remember the first time that he and I met and got a chance to talk. I've told people he is one of the greatest trainers inside of this company, inside of this whole industry. One of the great trainers. He has a way, an ability, and a skill set uh, that, that I frankly haven't seen. He's phenomenal what he does. He's ranked in the top 10 in the world. His business partner is Jason Brown, another great friend of mine. Without these guys, I would not be where I'm at today inside this company. These are my personal upline. I'm grateful for them. I'm grateful for what they continue to do in the leadership, in the example that they set for myself and so many hundreds of thousands of people around the globe. So guys, with that, Let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and put in the chat box fire emojis for Chairman 750, Mr. Matt Rosa. Matt, let me know if you can hear me out there, man. Loud and clear, big bro. Can you hear me? Loud and clear, man. We're excited to have you on. And, and frankly, thank you for uh, taking the time to be here with us. Dude, my pleasure, man. Honestly, uh, Brandon and I have been talking about this training for what weeks now yeah. it's crazy because brandon is so he's one of those leaders that he goes out and he makes sure that every t is crossed every i is dotted he's extremely prepared and he's somebody that wants to intentionally 
be able to impact the organization. So the topics that we get, he knows who's going to best be able to relate to that topic uh, in regards to guest speakers. He's somebody that is extremely organized in the aspect of making sure that not only is it properly promoted, but it's streamed on so many different platforms. This guy's trying to bring the information that could change the situation to as many ears, minds, and hearts as possible. And Brandon, I thank you. You know, we've been friends now for, sheesh, I think like six years. Yeah, almost six years. About, yep. <laughs> about six years now. Um, and you have never let me down. You've been somebody that I can count on. You've been somebody that I can model. Um, and you've just been that individual that no matter what, good or bad, I know that you're going to have my back and in return I have yours, man. So I send an immense amount of love and light to you and your family. I wish I was going on that vacation with you guys to Hawaii. It sounds absolutely incredible. Um, and to everybody on this call, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for taking the time on this beautiful afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever it is that you're tuning into uh, this call from, and really ready, being ready to fill your cup. Um, I don't take for granted the fact that I'm on this call right now. You know, John T. Maxwell, he talks about it. He says that the first level of leadership is the uh, uh, position level of leadership, right? That's the title, right? And a title is the lowest level of leadership that there is. And I thank you guys for jumping on here, not because of my title, but because of the value, right? And the second level of leadership being the permission level of leadership. Brandon has given me permission to have proximity to the organization. You guys have given me permission to be able to teach you and to be able to guide you. So with that being said, I'm going to do my very best. Now, a few ground rules few ground rules. Uh, first and foremost, we got to be making sure that we're taking notes. Um, one of my least favorite cliches is that note takers are money makers. Brandon, we were broke taking notes, man. The reason that we take notes is because we forget the vast majority of what it is that we learn if we don't write the information down. Now, our goal is to impact, enrich, and educate the lives of a million people. You know, create a thousand chairman tens and above. We do that. We go on to create a better tomorrow. If we're able to create a better tomorrow, that to me is worth everything, right? But here's the thing. We cannot afford to forget what it is that we learned today if we're going to go out and we're going to create a better tomorrow. Uh, the next thing is this. Each one teach one. If for some reason you have somebody in your organization that was not able to make this call for one reason or another, it's okay, but you are now that source. Because in this industry, it doesn't matter if you're the best at recruiting, the best at speaking, the best at training. If you are not able to teach the information that you know, properly rely it, it will not grow because what you can teach is duplicatable and duplication is going to lead to the momentum that each and every single one of us are after. Uh, so with that being said, we're going to get this thing rocking and rolling. So guys, um, I've been inside of this amazing industry uh, since 2012, and it's completely changed my entire life. Now, I'm not talking about the tangibles. I'm not talking about the, the, the lifestyle or the traveling and all that stuff. I think that that's a byproduct of the way it's changed my mind. It's changed the way I respond instead of react to certain situations. It's changed the type of husband that I am. It's changed the type of leader that I am, the brother that I am, the friend that I am. It's just completely changed so much inside of my life. Um, and over the course of the past few years that I've been inside of this industry, I've consciously tried to look for every lesson or a lesson in every single loss that I experienced, right? And I knew that I was doing that for two reasons. First and foremost, so I would not repeat that again. But then second of all, so that I could be able to teach this information to the individuals that needed to hear this information at one point or another. Um, and I like to pride myself on always being a student. It's something that Brandon and I both have in common. Um, it doesn't matter who's speaking. We're always attentive. We're always taking notes. Uh, we're always consciously listening. And the reason being is because there's something you can learn from anybody. You can learn what not to do, or you can learn what to do better, right? Um, and not too long ago, I had the opportunity to spend a few days with uh, a brother of mine, really good friend, industry veteran. Mr. Lasaldo Tavares. Um, he's one of our Go Live educators, fellow Chairman 100 as well. And um, he said something. We were at a Platinum 2000 boot camp, and he was having a conversation, a one on one conversation with one of the leaders there. And he said, Yo, I want you to understand that the business is not built during momentum. 
I know that sounds crazy. Let me explain. The business is not built during momentum. The business is built during stagnancy and pullbacks. And I'm in a unique space right now. Um, being at Chairman 750, my problems are very different from your problems. My responsibilities and roles are very different from your responsibilities and roles. Um, and as of recently, uh, within the past few months, my wife decided to join the business. Now check this, Brandon. It took her for me to hit Chairman 750 for her to finally join the business, bro. <laughs> but she did it. She finally did. So if you're out there and, and your closest ones are saying, you know, I'm not sure if I want to do that. It's okay. It's okay. It, this is not for everybody. And our goal is not to partner with everybody, right? Um, timing is of the essence. And she told me I want I want to join. Uh, she's phenomenal. And it's interesting because it's lagging. Is it lagging, Brandon, or am I good? Uh, it was lagging for about 10 seconds. It seems to be better right now. Okay. So as I've been, as I've been helping her throughout this journey, um, I've had the opportunity. It feels like I'm building from the ground up. It genuinely feels like I'm building from the ground up. And um, what I mean by that is I have a closer proximity to seeing the issues and the problems of a Platinum 150 of a customer, of a Platinum 2000, and even of a Chairman 10. And it brought me back to one of the greatest lessons that I learned. One of the greatest lessons that I learned uh, from one of my mentors, Mr. Christopher Terry. Now, back in 2000, I want to say it was 2018, 19, 18 actually, um, I called Chris up and I said, Chris, what do I got to do to get you on tour with me in Europe? Now, tour is something that is very tedious. You can ask Brandon. We've been throughout Europe. I mean, Brandon has international teams literally all over the world, right? Uh, it's very tedious. It's very expensive. You're away from the family. You are running on a very, very small window of sleep. You have to try to remain disciplined on your habitual patterns that you have, like your morning routines, working out. Um, and again, it is expensive, right? Like uh, from a business perspective, touring. I travel around with two to three individuals at a time. That's two to three flights that we're paying for two hotel rooms, two to three hotel rooms, uh, dinners every night. I mean, if we go on a 30 day tour, we can average about 30,000 for that month. Um, and on average, 90 days later, I'll recognize that we have seen an increase in business from the from the markets that we that we that we saw anywhere between 15 to 25 percent. But during the unfortunate lockdown that we were in, um, I was sitting down at the very table that I'm sitting down right now. I'm in my wife's uh, uh, office right now, but I was sitting down at the very table that I'm sitting down in right now. And um, we were able to uh, 3X our business in the time that we were in lockdown, which didn't cost any money. It didn't cost any time away from the family or anything along those lines. Um, but I know that touring does something unique. And what it does for individuals is that it gives us the ability to gain proximity in a physical manner and from there on out really understand one another and then from there on out build a relationship. And those relationships are worth more than I could ever put a price tag on. So I know how tough touring can be. And I asked Chris, our CEO, who definitely does not need to be touring, right? I asked him, I said, Chris, what is it going to take to get you on a tour? And he said, Matt, just send me over the itinerary and we'll get it done. So here we are, we're traveling all throughout Germany and we're traveling all throughout France and we're traveling all throughout London, Portugal, uh, 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 Belgium, literally all over. And um, one of the events that I was the most excited for was the Portugal event. Um, they just have an energy that cannot be denied. 
Um, they'll pack the room moments notice. Uh, they are true products of the product, real testimonials when it comes to the trading aspect of the business. Extremely grateful. So I was very, very excited to go to Portugal. And the night before, I think we were in the UK or France, one of the two. And Chris called me up and he said, Matt, do you have your flights for tomorrow? Now, mind you, I'm traveling with my wife, my creative director towards the end of tour. Um, and I said, yeah, Chris, I do. He said, I need you to cancel those. I want to take you on a flight with me. Um, so I said, okay. I double thought about it because again, you're thinking about how much money it is that you're spending on these tours. But I said, you know what? I'm going to cancel the flights. Don't worry about it. And we showed up to the airport. Well, um, we get there and there's a delay. They're doing maintenance on the plane. Then there's another delay. And then there's another delay. And then there's another delay. Before I know it, we're over four hours delayed for this event. Um, and the team's texting me and they're saying, Matt, when are you going to get in? When are you going to get in? When are you get in? You know, we keep on pushing your time back. And I'm like, guys, I'm trying, I'm trying, I'm trying. I'm looking at flights on my phone. Chris is like, don't worry about it. We're going to get there. So finally they call us in and uh, we get onto this plane. And um, I don't know about you guys, but when I get proximity to my mentor, I'm guilty of it. We tend to give the negatives about what it is that we're going through. And I come to Chris with these problems, but not many solutions, right? Um, and I sit down with him and I'm like, this is going wrong, that's going wrong, this is going wrong, that's going wrong. Um, and I know that he can't ignore my texts. I know that he can't ignore my calls. So I'm just giving it to him straight right then and there. And at the time they had just released the rank of Chairman 500. Uh, we were the first Chairman 250s inside of the company and the ego in me was saying, I need to be the first Chairman 500. And I was telling him, I was like, look, man, I don't know what it is. Um, and I think that some of you guys on this call right now can relate to this or will be able to relate to this. I said, I don't know what it is right now. I don't know what season it is right now. But, bro, it feels like I'm stuck. As a matter of fact, I feel like I'm in a downtrend. My business feels like it has a revolving door. You see, I feel like I'm in a space where I'm doing everything I'm supposed to be doing, but the back office isn't updating and reflecting what it is that I think that I should be doing. And Chris is a unique individual, to say the least. I think me and Brandon can both agree on this. Um, he doesn't know much about the back office or anything along those lines, but one thing he does know is charting. And uh, he went ahead and he drew something out on a napkin that would forever change my life. Now, my goal here, my intention here, is to change the way it is that you look at your business. Change the way it is that you look at your trading accounts. Because if we change the way it is that we look at something, the thing that we look at will begin to change. If we change the way it is that we look at something, the thing that we look at begins to change. Whether it's the relationships that we're in, whether it's the trading accounts that we're trying to compound, whether it's the business that we are trying to compound as well. Um, if we change the way it is that we look at it, if we're able to analyze it in a different way, then I really believe, I'm a strong believer that what it is that we look at will begin to change. So when I first got started inside of I Mastery Academy, um, I was making about $2,000 a month inside of the industry. So... I entered the business um, and after about, I would say, I can see this a little better. After about 60 days of utilizing the products, are we good, Brandon? Yeah. Yeah, it's good. It, it was lagging a little bit, but you're good right now. Okay. Awesome. So we entered on P2000 after about 60 days of utilizing the products, right? we decided to build the business. Now, when we decided to build the business, we saw massive success. And I understand that timing played a massive role in it. I understand that positioning played a massive role in it. I understand that the individuals that I was partnered with, like Brandon Boyd, played a massive role in it. And we accomplished the rank of Chairman 10 in 63 days. Now, I spent my entire career trying to accomplish this threshold. 
right? And the momentum that we experienced was insane. As we get to know each other a little bit more, you'll start to learn my story. And for me to make Chairman 10 type of income, it was life changing for me, right? So we experienced momentum. Now during momentum, I don't know if you've realized, but the energy is extremely high, right? I'm trying to make it focus a little bit more. Here we go. There we go. So the energy is insanely high. I don't know if you've realized, but during momentum, nothing can go wrong. You know, during momentum, every time I check the back office, it's updated and the numbers are going crazy. During momentum, every time that I enter a trade, I'm hitting. During momentum, every payment that I go to process goes through. During momentum, nothing can go wrong. Everyone's responding inside of the chats and the energy and vibration of the organization is extremely high, right? But rules of the universe, I did not make this up. And just because I'm a chairman 750 does not mean that I'm exempt. What goes up must come down, right? And the goal is during these retracements that we do not pass 30 to 35% retracement level. If we do that and we stay in those boundaries, we're looking like we're in the green right now. Unfortunately, due to unforeseen circumstances, some my fault, others not mine, not only did I experience a pullback, but I passed the 30 to 35% threshold, bringing me all the way down to P1000. Now, I had a choice here to trust my analysis and stay in the trade or get out and take my losses. To trust my analysis and stay in or get out and take my losses. After a conversation with multiple people, one of them being Brandon Boyd, who mentored me through this process, I decided to stay in. And we began to work on systems, develop new products, and that led to inevitably some more momentum followed by some stagnancy. Hit 5K again. And then some more stagnancy. And then reclaimed Chairman 10. Now, during this time, during this time, I felt that I was stuck. What I did not realize was I was not stuck, but rather found stability. You see, I need you guys to understand that the and the consolidation inside of our business momentum itself. And the reason being, here let me see yeah i was lagging just a bit you're good now what about now brandon yeah yeah you're good brandon yeah you're good yep there you go hold on guys i think he's gonna try and sign back on first of all guys if you're getting value out of this <laughs> Go ahead and, and uh, jump inside the chat and put value. Um, he's going to jump back on here. I've been taking notes, by the way. There you go, Matt. We got you back on. Okay, one second. And go ahead and unmute yourself. There you Am go. I good now? Yeah, you're good. Yeah. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Apologies. Um, so I read a comment uh, right before it kicked me off stating, how did I drop from Chairman 10 to P1 and get it back? I'm about to explain right now. You see, during this area of consolidation, this is as important, if not more important, than the actual momentum itself, right? Allow me to explain. When you're in momentum, you're so focused on the income-producing activities. The income-producing activities. We're showing the plan, showing the plan, showing the plan. During this area 
a pullback consolidation. What we're able to do is focus on the systems. We're able to find out if the systems are simplistic. We're able to find out if the systems are producing results utilizing the products. We're able to identify the next wave of leadership. We're able to make sure that we have a trading culture. Essentially, what it is that you're doing is you're looking for the lack inside of your organization. Brandon, I want to make sure I'm still here. Hello, hello. Can you guys still hear me? In the chats, can you guys still hear me? Yes. Okay, awesome. So what ended up happening was that at this point, we were able to bring, at this point, we introduced Mr. Alex Morton to the business, right? Right here, we introduced more into the business about a year after feeling stuck, right? And months after that, we accomplished the rank of Chairman 25, right? But again, we experienced a bit of a pullback, followed by some stagnancy, maintained. And then from there, went Chairman 50, 90 days later. From there, a little bit more stagnancy. Then Chairman 100. And Brandon was here the entire time, so he can attest for this type of growth. Then from here, stagnancy a little longer. And about eight months later, Chairman 250. Now, at this point, I'm on the plane with Chris right here. At this point, I'm on the plane with Chris, right? And I'm experiencing a bit of a pullback. I'm close to deep ranking to Chairman 100, and I'm experiencing that stagnancy, right? And here's where it is that I feel that I am stuck again. Here's where it is that I feel that I am stuck again. And Chris, what he did for me, and I want to see in the chats if you're able to recognize what I recognize here. What Chris did was he highlighted something for me. Who sees what I see here? We see the higher highs. Higher highs, higher highs. So what does that mean? The higher high signifies the uptrend. What I did not realize, and this is the dope part. Guys, I was so focused on the pullback that I was experiencing. Let me see, focus, there we go. I was so focused on the pullback that I was experiencing right here that I did not realize that I was looking at my business from the five minute time frame. When I zoomed out, When I zoomed out, I realized that I was looking at my business. You guys felt that? I felt shift happen. When I zoomed out, I realized that I was actually looking at my business from the wrong time frame and that I wasn't on a downtrend, but rather an uptrend and there was just a correction happening. So what I challenge you is to look at your business from the daily, weekly, monthly and yearly. That's what I challenge you to do. I challenge you to look at your business differently so the business that you look at begins to change. It's safe to say that we are light years away from where it is that we once got started. And I'm not just talking about a monetary aspect. I'm talking about my mind, my spirituality, my trading, my knowledge is light years away from where it was that I had first started. And this business is, it's something else because we're showing the plan every day and we see the next rank every single day. Every time we show that comp plan, we're seeing how close or how far it is that we have left to go. 
instead of recognizing how far it is that you have left to go, shift and see how far it is that you've come. Change the way you look at your business. The business that you look at will inevitably begin to change. Inevitably. This goes for your trading as well. You know, trading is 90% mindset. Some people say it's 80%. I'm going to call it 90%. Once you learn that technical analysis aspect of it, once you learn the fundamental aspect of it, I can promise you that my biggest losses have come from my mindset, whether it be revenge trading, whether it be not trusting my analysis, whether it be uh, me trading in a funk, whether it be me trading pairs that I do not uh, 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 have experience with, right? Whether it be me getting FOMO on trades that other people are in. It's always been my mindset. And then when I lose money inside of the markets, I tend to get emotional about it. And I look at those accounts and I'm like, man, not recognizing how much money I've withdrawn from the markets or how up I am. Perfect example is cryptocurrency. You know, right now, a lot of our portfolios are not doing the best. And I see the percentage, right? I see the percentage of drawdown that I have inside of these accounts. But then I realized, wait, I invested X amount and I'm still up. You see, we got to change the way we look at our accounts. So the way we feel about our accounts tend to change as well. The way we feel about our business tends to change as well. So with that being said, guys, essentially, in order to get through the season, you got to look at the season differently. I understand the way this business runs and the seasons that it runs in. And I think that Brandon is able to attest to this as well. You see, January, think about it, January, New Year, New Me, the gyms are full. People are joining businesses. People are investing in new things. New Year, New Me. Then come March. March Madness is always insane. It's the craziest month for business in general. March comes and it goes absolutely wild. But then what happens? March, April, May, we hold out that momentum. But May, June, summertime starts to happen. People are taking vacations. Why do you think the markets are slower right now than they were before? Not enough money circulating inside of the markets at this point. And same exact thing with businesses. You know, kids are off of school um, and people are just outside, especially with COVID-19 happening right now, that we finally are starting to see a light at the end of the tunnel for a lot of countries. People are able to travel more because the restrictions are less. And then what happens? Come fall, people realize, man, I spent a lot of money during the summer. It's time to get back in. It's time to get focused again. And that lasts till about the end of November, where people become very focused on their families for the holidays, depending on what culture your organization is. I know for me, my UK team, a uh, vast majority are Muslim, they're not celebrating Christmas, but I know when their market is gonna slow down based off of their religion and the holidays that they go ahead and they celebrate. You see, if you're able to predict what's gonna happen next, you're not gonna react to certain times or seasons, you're rather going to respond to those times or seasons. Hence why we understand summer is a slower season. Why do you think we threw SummerSlam? Because I know that big, 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 big events lead to big, 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 big decisions. So guys, I'm so grateful to have given you guys this information. Um, I'm honored, I'm blessed. Um, and it's just something that took me years to learn. Um, and I hope that it cuts the learning curve for each and every single one of you guys. I love you guys. God bless you guys. And uh, Brandon, thank you for having me, my brother. Whoa, this is powerful, guys. I want to show you two things. I'm going to show you something first, and Matt will be able to relate to this that goes with what he just said. And then I'm going to give you guys some of the bullets of the notes uh, that Matt gave. So let me show you a screenshot here to go along with what Matt was just talking about. And this was uh, kind of going with his journey. This is from a training, guys, I did called Eventually You Will Win. I'll give you guys access to that today with the, uh, uh, with the actual recording. But watch this. So when you look at the ranks here, I went through very similar to what Matt did. I went straight from P150 to Chairman 25 very quickly. And then I was stuck, however grateful, stuck, stagnant. It seemed that way, right? 
in 2017, 2018, I was at the same rank for two years. That's kind of a long time. Then I hit chairman 50. I was stuck at chairman 50 for another two years. And then I hit chairman 100 on my wife's birthday, March 16th of this year. But if you look at it, I went up an average of 1.8 ranks a year, still almost two ranks a year with the time I've been here in, inside the company. So that's why I love what Matt said. He said, it's not built during momentum. It is built when. It's built when. And that's where I want to share with you guys the notes. The business is not built during momentum it is built during times of stagnancy so if you feel that your business is a little bit stagnant if you feel that people are no longer really commenting in your chats in fact they're pressing mute on whatsapp or telegram or facebook or whatever they're not really paying attention it's during those times where see it seems like that the seats are a little bit empty you go to do an event and kind of hardly anybody shows up what did matt say he said he made an adjustment a realignment. And he looked at things he saw. It was actually an uptrend. He said, you got to change the way you look at things and the things you look at changed. He was not stuck. He found stability. He was not stuck. He found stability. So are you looking at your business as a time frame, a five minute time frame, or are you looking at it as daily, weekly, monthly, yearly? For myself, I know that's how I do it. Of course that you could log in and look at the five minute time frame of your business and go, Every morning you log in, you're like, dude, freaking volume's down. And then it can be going up again as the day is going on. And then you log in the next morning. First thing in the morning, you go like this again. Dude, my business isn't growing, right? But whatever we focus on expands. Right now, I know for my business, it is seed planting time. And guess who starts the seed planting? Me. The fall and the winter comes, the harvest, because of what I've done during this time. So guys, if you like Matt's training, put an amen inside the chat book. Put fire emojis in the box, all right? Th this is huge right now because this is where champions made, okay? This guy behind me, Mike Jordan, I've got this whole thing surrounding my office. I've got all this memorabilia. I have almost 30,000 US dollars first uh, with a stuff in here. It was during the summertime that while everybody else was taking a break, Michael Jordan worked on his game. And today, a lot of people call him the GOAT. Guys, it is what you do right now between the Zoom calls, being on SummerSlam, showing up to trainings that will determine your trading account and your business account over the next three months, six months, nine months, and 12 months. For me, the grind never stops. And guess what? The checks never stop. Isn't that interesting? Because the grind never stops, and that consistency and laser focus is there, the checks keep coming. I remember Ivan Tapia was asked on stage, when you hit these different ranks, they said, uh, when is enough is enough? When, when do you kind of get to sit down and rest? And, and, he, and he said, you don't. He said, you just keep going, right? There, there's new levels. I listened to Ed Milet yesterday. He just said on his Instagram, they said, when's enough enough? The guy asked him that. And he goes, when's enough enough for you? Enough of not achieving your dreams. Enough of not being able to pay for a vacation, take time off of work and put it on credit cards. Working for people that you don't like at a job that you hate. When is enough enough for you? All right, guys, please take the notes that hopefully you guys have taken today and make it applied knowledge. All right. Do not store up this information. Yes, the Bible says that the wise man layeth up and store knowledge, but a real wise man and a woman takes that knowledge and actually applies it to change the results of their lives. All right, guys, we appreciate you. Thanks for jumping on. The call has been recorded. Matt, thanks Thanks for your example, your leadership. I absolutely love the drawing that I've seen you do that drawing several times. I absolutely love it because it keeps what? It keeps perspective. You think that you've had a pullback, yet you're still on an uptrend. You're still making improvements. You're still making progress. And progress equals happiness. With that, guys, we're going to go ahead and close the call. Hopefully you enjoyed this. You got some value out of it. We'll talk to you guys very, very soon. And we'll see you at SummerSlam. Talk soon, guys.